All right, you. So tonight we're going to talk about your starting point with whom do I start? You know, and we get this question all the time. I'm an agent with UFF, but I don't know where to start. What is my first step? I'm not sure who I should be approaching and who I should start with. Now, I do want to say something here. If you are a builder, a leader in the field, you should be training into your people what this first step is, what the first thing they should do, what uh, who they should be in contact with, and how they should do this. Down training is essential in our business in both areas, recruiting and in sales. So the way that we see this is that you have to have constant focus on your business and lead by example. And what I mean by that is the lifeblood of your business is recruiting and training. Now, you have a lot of people in a lot of different areas that would say, well, sales are the lifeblood of the company. Well, let me tell you, if you don't recruit anybody, you don't have anybody to sell to, so to speak, because you have to recruit them to the message. You have to recruit them to the idea, to the mission. Sales have to go hand in hand with recruiting. Not one is more important than the other. But isn't it amazing if you're a little stale in your business, you go out and recruit somebody, and you're re-energized in your business because you're now teaching them the basics, which is getting you back into the the flow of doing the things that are basic. So do know that in both recruiting and in sales, training in both areas from your upline, from videos, and from getting in the field is absolutely mandatory. So your first step is build your business through recruiting. Your second step is build your business through personal and team sales with both of those aspects uh, maintaining a good level of training for the people that are coming in so they know what to do, what to say, and how to move through the process. You know, I had somebody today ask me the question, I don't understand why we have to do split sales. And I think this is an absolute example of why we need to do split sales because it teaches from the top down Uh, all of the practices, all of the good practices of building a business, of building a team, of representing the product, of showing the product, of moving that from product to purchase, from product to recruit, from product to recruit and purchase. All of this comes through the training. But one thing we can say is the formula is recruit, sell, train, should be in there in both, and repeat. And then constantly focus on recruiting and making personal sales. Train your team to do the same. If you do this, and we see this with big recruiters and with uh, people that are building big organizations, a very integral part of their success is training that they are doing for their downline so that when they do kick out an executive director in his own base shop, he knows what to do. He knows how to bring in those new people, what process to put them through, and, and how to get them moving in the direction of success. Um, I know you, Steve, you have a lot on recruiting and have always had a lot to say about recruiting. Um, do you have any thoughts on this, just what we're in right now? You know, I, I mean, you're, you're really hitting it on the, on the head, uh, Mac. It, it is so important to focus and try to get that new person focused on recruiting because when you have that new recruit and then, like we were talking earlier today, how can you prove to them or show them how, how the Money Max account works? Well, you run their analysis. You show them their numbers. Run their program. Show, prove it to them. Let them see because anytime you see your numbers, it now becomes reality, not perception. And so, uh, you know, I just, I just think in, uh, by, by looking at that, in both cases, you want to have to, you know, follow some simple steps. In all cases, treat, treat a prospective client the same way you would treat a prospective agent. In reality, hey, they are the same thing. Our primary goal is to get them on the product so you can earn money, right? So we want to go out there. We want to recruit some people. And what are we recruiting those people to? Or, or why are we recruiting them? We're recruiting them so that we expand our market. They have a warm market. They have a center of influence. Remember, we talked about that over the last couple of weeks. And they will bring you to more people and expand that marketplace so you're not in a cold market. So as you bring people in, and if they need the product, they're going to want the product, and you've proven it through their analysis and their program. You've recruited them, 
and now they're going to go out and share it with other people. And so you kind of have this momentum that's continuing to go on, and uh, you you got recruiting that never stops. You know, and and introducing them to that exact same pro process. See, I think some some people are going a little astray here in this context. If I was recruiting somebody as an agent or recruiting them for the business, one of the first things I would introduce them to is the program itself. And what is the easiest way to introduce them to the program? Have them run their analysis. This should be one of the first steps that you have. If you introduce everybody to the Money Max program, if you get a recruit uh, in the door and let's say you introduce them to the program and they become an agent in the process of going through that, seeing what the analysis looks like, seeing their results, going through that complete system just like you were trying to sell them the product, then they've already been exposed to the basics of the product. You may get them out as an agent, but they understand what it is and what we're doing and how we do it. I want to say this without equivocation. I think every single person you speak to that you set an appointment with, whether it's you think they're going to be a great agent, whether you think they're going to buy the product, or whether you think they are going to do both, you should be driving them to that short questionnaire, to the savings report, the savings analysis. Our job begins before that, and we'll see that as we go a little deeper into the lesson, but your job truly begins or you truly have your opportunity with your job when you can get somebody's numbers and when you can do an analysis for them, and then you can kind of turn the light bulb on for them that uh, the dynamic potential, not only in business, but for them individually as well. So in setting the stage for success, there's just a couple little items uh, that we always uh, defer to, and I just want you to understand all of these fall under the category of one thing, gaining the client's interest. How do we talk to the client? How do we approach the client? So your first is whom do I start with? Your second, and these are necessarily in orders, but these are components. Uh, that you want in place in any in introduction. Your personal or borrowed story, watching the videos, buying the Money Max account program, your 15-second commercial, some people call this an elevator pitch, the litmus test, the use of qualifiers and tie-downs, and then eventually setting that first appointment. So while I'm listing all of these different items out, no, these are all just components of your introduction, of gaining interest, of getting that client drawn into you. But the one that we want to center on today is with whom do I start? And that is, Steve mentioned it last week, and we have mentioned it the week before, one of the most important things that you can do is create a list. And where does that start? We suggest that you start with people you know. You know, people that need the help, people that are homeowners, people that are businessmen. Your uh, warm market should be where you start, need to need one-on-one, and always start with that certified trainer. Uh, that is part of your first two split sales that you have to go through a certified trainer in order to do that. Work within your sphere of influence like Steve was talking about. Approach individuals in your same primary vocation. Why would you do that? Well, because you already know their language. You already have credibility with them. You can already speak to their level where the product is concerned. And make no mistake that these are the people that will be the easiest for you to probably break through initially is people that have done the same job as you and people that know you and respect you and care about you. Um, then move on there from people that you don't really already know. But always start your list off with that warm market. And every new prospect should give you a name list of at least 10 to 100 people. I mean, there's that old saying, right, Steve, that uh, people know people you don't. And so we always want to be working through people, not around people. When you get a new prospect, I've seen prospects and, and people out there where uh, the person does not really qualify for the program or they don't have that much debt, but because the presentation is flawless, because the process is flawless, because they're taking them through it, they say, you know what, I do know some people that would be interested in this service, that would be interested in this type of product. So you're always laying your groundwork when you're creating your list. So just remember your business starts with your contact list. Uh, make a list of everyone you know. 100 names is a great start. Do not edit the list. 
just start writing the list out. Now, we are in the process. We've had a couple memory joggers that we've put together, and uh, we're in the process. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this week or the middle of next week, we will have those posted into the agent back office. And uh, I'm looking at some copies of these memory joggers right now. So I'm imagining that this is something that we will be able to get posted uh, by the beginning of next week into the back office, and we'll just post it as memory jogger. Write down everyone that comes to mind. Successful representatives constantly update their list because they're constantly meeting people. In your business, I don't know what anyone has told you about what it is that you're doing for a business, but whether you realize it or not, your job is you are in the people business. And remember that. It's how you approach people. Many times it's not what you say, it's how you say it and how you approach the individual. So we always want to start with a back to the basics list. I just couldn't get the the, 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 the in there. So the BTTB list, the back to basics list. And uh, with this list, I'm going to let Steve go ahead and take over here for a little bit uh, through brainstorming in your database. You know, <clears throat> it, it, in like many of you have probably heard this if you've been in sales any length of time, okay? Folks, if you're, if you're building a house, you have to start with the foundation, right? In building your business, especially in recruiting, where it's important that you recruit and build, you have to start with a good, solid foundation. And you've got to know people. And you want to know people that are, like Mac just said, I mean, he said it perfectly right. Hey, that have the same interests as you, as you do. They're, they're, they have some commonalities. I remember when I first got into the insurance business um, almost 40 years ago, I was a construction worker, and the guy I worked with every day, we were three scaffolds up in the air. We were about 30 feet up in the air working, um, and he couldn't go anywhere. And I had just went to an opportunity meeting, and, uh, and so he was going to listen to me. And guess who my first client was? He was. He allowed me to come over. So do a little brainstorming. Think about everyone that you can. Open up that phone. Start writing people down. Use a, we're going to have a memory jogger for you. And it's going to, you know, hey, who, who do you know that's a plumber? Who do you know is a policeman, a physician? Who do you know that um, uh, is in the printing business, et cetera? The, who do you know that's a tailor? It's going to go through and jog your, your uh, memory to write these people's names down to begin your, your base of building your business. Uh, your database, your book of business, your sphere of influence. Hey, the most important thing you got, again, and we'll mention it, that cell phone. It has thousands of names in it, folks. I guarantee you it does. Social media friends, people that you get on Facebook with and all of that type, type of stuff. Categorize these people. Client, prospect, agent, prospect, or both. Hey, this doesn't say scratch off people, just like Max said. He didn't say scratch off people. You look at who might be a client prospect or who might be an agent prospect. Write that down and kind of gear towards that. You don't know who's going to be either one, but you don't take anyone off your list. Then you start ranking those people from one to ten. Hey, one, maybe not so hot, but, you know, someone on my list. And number ten is the hottest. Now, if you're going to go on the end of business, you want to break this down. You want to break it down from your top hundred to your top 25, to your top 10. Now, who do you want to call? You want to call those top 10 prospects with your certified field trainer. Contact those top 10 hot people and let them know what you're doing and let your certified field trainer help you, and you will develop clients and you will develop recruits. Now, the thing that we want you to really get from this, I mean, all this is good that we're jogging our memory and rating our clients, get your prospect agent in the field as fast as you possibly can. That's why making this list is so important and getting this name list. The longer you wait to get that new prospect, that new agent into the field, the more they can fall victim to what I call analysis paralysis and staying in the library too long thinking that they need to learn everything before they can get out and talk. I tell you right now, with the certified field trainers, the most important thing you can do, number one, get your name list done. Number two, get out in the field and start making phone calls, start making sales. 
and I almost put it as a close second to that. Um, it might even be in first place. I don't care which one you do first. Run, your, have your own analysis run by a certified field trainer so you understand uh, what the product is and what that we're doing. Remember this uh, back to the basics list is imperative. You know, that, you know the, the rule uh, that I've always tried to live by, Mac, is within 24 to 72 hours, that person has to be in the field. Now, because we can do this on the computer now, you just got to convert that to the computer. That means in front of someone, talking to someone, it's key that within 24 to 72 hours, that new recruit is, is on an appointment. They're talking with someone with their trainer because it's keeping them excited. It's, it's again, proving to them what it can do. They close a sale, they make some income, and the energy starts to take over. Most commonly skipped step, yet one of the most important ones, is help uh, is to help make you bulletproof. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you hear a no, or prospects are not ready to move forward, you're not sitting around with nothing to do. You have a list of people who need this program. Need they need what you have to offer. So remember that. Remember, listen. This this people skip the most important steps of getting back to those basic things. And that's utilizing those people's names, their goal, their importance to you. You know, this uh, having more people to talk to decreases that commission breath where you're begging for business and pleading for business, and people can tell it, and they can they, they know it's all over you. Then it also gives you your next step that you need to having success. You know, the most important thing that you have, and we're going to say it over and over again for your business, is your phone, um, your database. Uh, is what is primary uh, to your business, having the name list to call on. And, and that's why it's so important to keep the recruiting going. We want to give you a couple ideas for prospecting. We're just going to go through these pretty quick. But uh, here are just some examples, HOAs, uh, community organizations, uh, individual HOA or property management groups and uh, things of that nature, new home construction builders, realtors. Uh, banner advertisement, call realtor signs, call the advertisements, uh, open houses. These people are a captive audience in an open house. Stop by real estate and loan officers, you know, get into their world and uh, speak with, uh, at the office, speak with the brokers, speak with the loan officers. These are just some ideas of where you can go for prospecting, but do know this is after you have gone through your warm market. Always start with that warm market. Attend networking events, live chamber events, groups, mixers. Have a 15 second commercial ready, your elevator pitch. You know, what I do for a living without saying I sell debt elimination or I sell, sell a program. Uh, you have to be consistent and intentional uh, when you're out there prospecting. Co-sponsor events with those in the same professions. Host education series, online or in person booths and local events, home shows, chamber events, career fairs, attend or have a booth at professional seminars, loan officers, realtors, CPAs, financial planners, tax preparers, insurance professionals. Now, in all of these that we see here, um, one of the best presentations that I've seen, and uh, I, I believe it's been recorded and it is in the back office, is Rich Schaefer's Recruiting Professionals. I believe he did that on one of our Monday night calls. Um, but this is where you're talking now is going into your professionals. Um, you need to know their language. You can't just walk in the door of a loan officer or a tax preparer or a mortgage broker or insurance professional and just try to wing it. That's where you need to have some clout in that area. You need to know the language, have some licensing to be going into these areas. And if you don't have the licensing or that, make sure you're coupling with somebody that does, that speaks this language. You know, um, in, in most of the, the events that I've had the opportunity to go, uh, Rich Schaefer's been there. And, and folks, if you have the opportunity, to, like, like this weekend, if you have the opportunity to be close to San Luis Obispo in Central Coast, California, you need to come hear Rich Schaefer talk about how to recruit business people. He is phenomenal. If you go in the back office and listen to it, it's phenomenal. We're going to try to do a, a, a video recording of him doing that. Uh, so you can see the facial expressions and the, the different things that he, he does and, and how he expresses himself to other people. It, it will add to your business and make you so much stronger and so much powerful 
in the recruiting opportunity because when you look at these people that especially are in the that are in the real estate market that are in the mortgage industry when you look at those people our business is just a, a, a hand in glove business with them and you can give them an opportunity to increase their business who would not want to increase their business who wouldn't want a new idea to help them do that yeah no and so just know that uh, what we're giving you here right now are just some basics and uh, we're, we're, we got through the prospecting aspect and writing your name list. Next week, we're going to talk about tracking your activity. We're going to talk about why it's so important, what that looks like to you to track your activity, how important that is. What does a personal and borrowed story look like? These are going to be areas and avenues that we're going to be going into in the next uh, few months. Uh, we have a couple really good uh, training seminars set up between Steve and I. We we kind of put out a game plan. Now we know that you know if something new and hot and special comes out, we're definitely going to air that and get involved in, in bringing that communication to you about those things. But we want to start getting in a very positive run of a of a training uh, with every single one of our calls, a training that has some meat and potatoes to it, has some good ideas for you. Um, but we thought it was really imperative with the growth and everything that we're seeing and, and how much recruiting that we're doing uh, that we truly uh, have you understand that uh, the most important thing to your business is your recruiting. And that is how you will always, uh, you know, bring your business to that new level where you um, are no longer just trying to figure out what is uh, the best thing for me to do at the current moment, but you always have things that you can do uh, at that moment. And so just know that in summary, step one is imperative in the sales process. Share UFF with others. Create curiosity. Um, this is going to be very important for you. Starting point with whom do I start and all of the areas uh, that are listed uh, in just your introduction and your gaining interest with this client and moving them forward. Uh, we all know the GPS selling system. We all know rules of engagement. This does not detract from it. This just breaks down, you know, how do I start? What does a good 15-second commercial look like? What does a personal and borrowed story look like? What does the litmus test look like? What are these different components that we're bringing together? We want to make sure that we're giving you trainings that propel your business, that get you excited, and move you forward. And so with that having been said, I'm going to turn a little bit of time over to Steve. You know, it, sometimes if you've been in the business, say, as long as Mac or I, and there's, there's probably quite a few people on this call tonight that have been in sales in one form or the other for quite some time, and you, you hear these things and you've heard them for years and years and years, but, you know, folks, sometimes we, we stop using things that work. And... We should never do that. You know, when something's working, we go, oh, well, let me change the way I say this, or let me change the way I do that. No, if it works, keep doing it. And like tonight, we've talked about some of the really basic things that many of you have been in the business for a long time understand, but you realize you're in the recruiting and building business. That new person that you just brought on, they maybe never have heard of any of this information. Maybe they didn't know where to start. And I didn't realize I needed to make a list. I didn't realize I needed to use you to help me make those calls. I didn't realize, hey, I should run an analysis on these people. Folks, understand when you're in the building business and recruiting business, you're always, you're always rebuilding. You're always bringing in that new blood. You're always bringing in those new people. And you might say the same story a thousand times, two thousand times. It doesn't matter. Those people haven't heard it, and your job is to teach and train so that everyone that comes through your organization knows what their next step is and what they're supposed to do. I feel like this company is on the verge of a tremendous explosion, folks. We are at the right place at the right time. People are so excited about what's going on with the company and with the things that are ahead in the future, with all the great things that we've got planned, the training events that we've got planned, the, the convention that's going to be coming up, the trip that we'll be sharing with you that will be coming up next year. So many great things are happening, and we've got people making money. And that's very important that happens. And we're helping America 
get out of debt. So, hey, from me, I appreciate you being on the call tonight. I look forward to seeing many of you in San Luis Obispo this weekend and uh, meeting with you. Right. Yep, let's get out there and do it big. Let's get out there and do it right. But at the very least, let's get out there and do something right now. This is Steve Smith and Max Saunders saying bye-bye for now. Have a good night, everyone.